You're naughty. Yeah, nice to see you. Boy, how you are look, you? You look fantastic. Thank you. How uh, uh, how old is your child? Do you have a child? Do you have a child? I do. Charlie is. Oh, Charlie. Two years and eight months. That's great. Two years and eight months is ideal, isn't it? Oh my God! Every day it's something new. He's exploding. Uh, but... I, I've forgotten uh, the schedule, the chronology of childhood. But two years, eight months, uh, talking, right? Yeah, oh, he's speaking, but, yeah. you know, I'm trying to raise him to be bilingual because Mandarin was my first language. Uh, my parents are Chinese immigrants. And um, so, but it's at this weird stage right now where he's speaking Chinglish. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like half, so like half the sentence will be in Chinese and half the sentence will be in English. So... It's fine for me, but, you know, for example, he only likes to say the word watermelon in Mandarin, which is xigua. 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 Xigua, that's watermelon. Yes. So, you know, when, when I'm... <laughs> very that's good. Beautiful, xigua. So well, it's no, better it's, than it's watermelon. She... It's what? Xigua. Xigua. Very good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. You know, so I'll, I'll be feeding him, and he'll he'll say things like, you know, um, you know, mama, more more shigua, more shigua, more shigua, and it's so cute. But the problem is, when my husband is home alone with him, he doesn't speak Mandarin, right. and I imagine he's saying the same thing. And I'll get a phone call from my husband, and he'll be like, Jules, what the hell is shigua? Yeah. I'm like. My watermelon. Well, let me ask you, this brings up another question. How, how much watermelon do you folks eat? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is going on at the house? <laughs> yes. All right, back up the truck. <laughs> now, uh, I mean, God bless you for teaching the child Mandarin, but here's what I think I know about Chinese versus English. English, uh, 26 letters in the alphabet, more, more or less. I <laughs> <laughs> give or take. The, the characters in Chinese, and I don't know specifically about Mandarin, are infinite. I know. It's very difficult. But the key thing with... Now, I cannot read or write it. I can speak it, and I know certain characters, mm -hmm. but there are certain um, parts... For example, a ko is like a little box. It, it looks like this, mm -hmm. right? And you know that if that little character, that little box, is in any part of the character, it has something to do with the mouth. So there's like a whole code to it. So the, the language is, uh, the, the uh, characters are actually illustrative of the meaning as yes, opposed to quite symbolic often. In, in our alphabet. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And Our, ours isn't symbolic. Ours is uh, phonetic. Right, exactly. Yours is illustrative. Yes, that does make sense, and I believe that is accurate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to go with it's accurate. <laughs> well, God bless you. Um, uh, and and uh, what's going on on the uh, the? You, were you just in New York doing the shows? Yes, we. Where just, do you do the shows when you're in town? This time we did it over at CBS Broadcast Center, mm -hmm. West 57th Street, and it was great because it was like a little bit of a homecoming for me because I was an intern in that building in 1989. You spent a lot of time at CBS, haven't you? A lot of time, a lot of history, and um, we just wrapped up the most fabulous week. Mm -hmm. We had a fabulous week. Who of was guests. on the show? Do you have guests on the show? Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> you clearly. <laughs> I am. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> if if you drank the way I drank. <laughs> We do have guests, and we had, in my opinion, the, like the, the biggest names you can get in, in New York City. We had everyone from Martha Stewart to Howard Stern to Liza Minnelli to Rachel Ray. I mean, it was, and it was oh, interesting. What? I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, it, but it, it, <laughs> it was interesting having Martha Stewart as a guest on the show because for many years, I worked with her at CBS on the early show because she was a contributor and she would often come on and cook these fabulous things. And I saw a totally different side of Martha when she came on the talk. She was a lot more fun, a lot more sassy. She was a, a kinder, gentler mm -hmm. Martha, shall we say. And, um, and I feel like that's what happens when people come on the talk. You're with five fun women. You can't help but be fun and, and chatty <laughs> and and I just remember there was one day at uh, the early show 
and we all had to work on Thanksgiving, which is kind of crummy, but one of the great things was was that Martha was cooking. Right. And all morning long, you could, you could smell like the turkey in the oven and the stuffing, and we were thinking, oh, we're going to eat so well today, because anytime anyone came on, whether it was Bobby Flay, whoever, the bonus was yeah. we got to eat like kings yeah. afterwards. So I remember after the broadcast was over, I ran down the stairs in the newsroom, and there was not one morsel of food left. Yeah. And I said to one of the stagehands, I said, I said, Tommy, you know, what happened to all the food? And he looks at me and goes, you kidding me? I saw Martha say to her staff, back it up, boys. It's going back to Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> back to Connecticut. Oh, we're not. There's no food bank here. She, uh, you know, she used to cook Thanksgiving dinner in the pen. <laughs> well, my joke about they loved it. <laughs> my joke about that was, you know, she knows how to make everything so beautiful, like the tea cozies. And I thought maybe she could make like a knit a cozy for the for the, the ankle bracelet. Yeah, oh, that's... Know, it's... <laughs> But I remember, and maybe you were the the one. This was right after she announced that she was going away, and but she was on. I think your show, and she's, she's chopping onions, and, and you or someone, was it you? It wasn't me, but I remember the cabbage Somebody tree. else is saying, uh, the, and, and, the, she, and finally yeah. Martha just said, look, all I want to do is chop onions and get the hell out of here. <laughs> and how was, how was Howard Stern? Because I know uh, your, your husband, Les Moonves, who owns CBS. Uh, he doesn't own CBS. Howard and, and, <laughs> and Les sometimes don't see, understandably, don't see eye to eye. And how was that when all of a sudden Howard is there with uh, you. He was perfect. A gentleman? He was funny. Well, he wasn't a gentleman. He was Howard. But, we, <laughs> but when you ask Howard to come on, you want Howard to be Howard. I mean, right. he's sitting there um, as a guest, and he's asking me, come on, Julie, how's less in bed? How's less in bed? Oh, I mean, my. so Howard is Howard. You know, you yeah. just, that's what you want him to come on. Well, who is telling me that less is more in bed? <laughs> I mean, where did I hear that? Did I? Did I just get here? What is? <laughs> God bless you. Well, it's the talk. I'd love to come on the show. Why don't you ever invite me to be on the damn show? I do. Would you come? No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're very private. Can't travel. You know we invite you. I can't you. travel. No, I can't. I have tuberculosis. <laughs> Julie, it's great to see you again. Thank you very much.